Well, good morning, fourth grade. Um, I am unfortunately going to be out on Friday, so I'm creating this video for my friends that um, are going to be here with a with a substitute. And I want to make sure you know what you're doing. We've been finishing up our donuts. We've added our details to them. We've cut these out. We've glued these to our background paper, um, to our printed donuts. And today, what I'm going to have you guys work on is what's called a value scale. And there is a video that goes along with this, but it's very similar to what we've already been doing with our shading. We've been using cross hatching. We've been doing a little bit of a solid shading here. I demonstrated this to you guys this past week and the week before. Um, I also demonstrated to you this with uh, watercolor and how I use different values to create um, the different um, shades of the donut, the different tones of the donut. Um, what they're going to have you do is create a grid, and you're just going to do this in your sketchbook. I don't recall offhand for sure if it was six um, cubes or squares. Um, I'm probably going to do five to six here just to give you an idea to get you started. Um, but this is basically what a value scale does. It shows you something from light to dark. You can do this with color. But we're just going to do this with just shading with our pencil right now. And we're going to go from the, the lightest to the darkest or the dark darkest to the lightest. I'm going to make this my lightest because um, it's the one I have the least amount of shading on right now. And I, I can do this with the pressure of my pencil just by moving it back and forth. And I want this to become my darkest, being my blackest of black. Okay. And I'm going to do that by using both hatching and cross hatching. I'm going to go back and forth. I don't want to use the point of my pencil. I want to use the side of my pencil. If I use the point of my pencil, I try to get discourage you guys from using a really sharp pencil. Because a sharp pencil, what it does it's it scratches your paper and it makes what's called an embossing into your paper and even if you can erase it it still leaves a mark on your paper which is not the most pleasant image on a piece of paper so what i'm doing is i'm moving my paper around and i'm using the side of my pencil and you can even actually lay your pencil down and just use more of the edge of the lead rather than the point of the lead and this can get you a very 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 dark value be the darkest shade or the darkest value of this black and then if I move to my next square I want to be dark but not as dark as the previous so this is more of a gray right now that's why it's called sometimes a gray scale or a value scale can see the difference between the two of these. But then when I move to this next one, I'm going to use, leave, use even less pressure and allow more of the white of the paper to show through. See how that's getting just a little more gray. And again, I move to the next one, a lot less pressure, and it seems to be a little lighter. And then my final one, even less. I may not even actually use my pencil all the way and just use my finger to blend it. If I had a shading step, I could do the shading step. And the shading step we've talked about before looks something like this, but the Q-tip works just as well. That's why I have the Q-tips always in the classroom. I can blend those together. But I want a, definitely a distinction between each one of those squares to show the value change. And that, is to represent the shadows on our donuts, the details in our donuts. We can show how one area is lighter and then darker. I hope that's helpful. Um, since I'm not going to be here on Friday, that's why I created this video. But those of you are more than welcome to watch it to assist you in creating your donuts and making your donuts even better. Have a great day. Be caring and kind. Use kind words. Kind bodies, kind hands, kind hearts.